Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Massive tin blast rocked Pakistan, over 55 people dead and several injured. India's Delhi Police Special Cell arrests ISIS most wanted terrorist. And security forces intensify anti-terror operations in Jammu and Kashmir. Let's begin the show with Pakistan's Balochistan province. This is Pakistan's largest province and also the most oppressed. Naturally, this province is perpetually always in the state of unrest. There are frequent terror attacks here. One such attack unfolded recently. There was an explosion in the province's Mastungs district. A powerful suicide blast ripped through a mosque here. More than 55 people died and several were injured. Our report will give you all the details. Mastung town in Pakistan's Balochistan province was shrouded in sorrow as a suicide attack claimed the lives of more than 55 people, leaving over 70 injured. This devastating incident marked Pakistan's deadliest terror attack since 2018, when 149 lives were lost to a suicide bombing in the same district. The tragedy unfolded near a mosque where people had gathered to celebrate the birth of Prophet Muhammad. In the aftermath of the initial blast in Mastung, another explosion rocked a mosque in Hangu, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, resulting in at least five casualties. Despite no immediate claims of responsibility for these bombings, the Tehrike Taliban Pakistan swiftly distanced themselves from the attacks. <laughs> Law enforcement agencies go in the Sustra Jaye and pay fiction lay. Ye Zulum or I. Ye Barra below a lead the Miladun Nabi, Nabi was a Salam Kadine. Is then Kuper be Staraki Barbariat? Ye Zulum Kadine, a Misko condemn Kurte. For decades, Pakistan has waged a battle against the Pakistani Taliban, a terrorist organization aiming to overthrow the government and establish a strict Islamic state. Despite significant military efforts, the TDP has continued to thrive, carrying out deadly terror attacks on both civilians and security forces. Over the last five years, there has been a concerning surge in violence in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan province. Alarmingly, these two provinces collectively accounted for 72% of all fatalities in 2019 a figure that soared to a staggering 92% in the first nine months of 2023, according to the Centre for Research and Security Studies. Experts suggest that the Pakistani state may be playing a double game, covertly supporting the TDP to destabilise Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa provinces, both of which hold strategic resources and harbour separatist movements challenging central government authority. By aiding the TDP, Pakistan can weaken separatists and cultivate an atmosphere of fear and uncertainty which aids in maintaining its hold on power. When the Taliban has been so-called peace deal with Pakistan, after that, the Taliban has come to the TDP and even in Balochistan has also been settled. So, they have to take अब मतलब यह कि यह पाकिस्तानी स्टेट यह कह रही है कि हम इनके खिलाफ हैं लेकिन यह मतलब यह कि इंतहाई गलत बात है कि यह इनके खिलाफ है यही उनको स्पोंसर कर रहे हैं और उसके बाद आप देख रहे हैं कि बत्ताखोरी में भी इजाफा हुआ है टॉर्चर में भी लोगों के इजाफा हुआ है टारगेट किलिंग बहुत ज्यादा हो गई है यानी पिछले कुछ अरसे में 500 से ज्यादा टारगेट किलिंग हुई हैं जिसमें हाई प्रोफाइल पश्तून शामिल हैं और इसी तरह बलूचिस्तान में भी यह हो रहा है पिछले कुछ दिनों में एक एनपी के जो रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हैं पार्टी के उनको कत्ल किया गया है पख्तूनख्वा में तो बहुत ज्यादा कत्ल हुए हैं हमारे एल्डर्स कत्ल हो रहे हैं हमारे ह्यूमन राइट्स डिफेंडर्स कत्ल हो रहे हैं तो ये مختلف स्ट्रेटजीज क्रिएट उनको लेके चल रहे हैं पाकिस्तान की रियासत लोगों को उठाना उनको टॉर्चर करना उसके अलावा टारगेट किलिंग करना 
اور اس کے علاوہ بم دھماکے کرنا اور سب سے اہم بات یہ ہو رہی ہے کہ پاکستان آرمی اپنے ہی سویلین اداروں کو اٹیک کر رہی ہے بلوچستان پاکستان لارجسٹ یٹ پورسٹ پروونس از رچ ان نیچرل ریسورسز دی پاکستانی گورنمنٹ اینڈ ملٹری ہیو بین اکیوزڈ آف ایکسپلوئٹنگ بلوچستان ریسورسز فار دیئر اون بینیفٹ وائل نگلیکٹنگ دی نیڈس آف دی بلوچ پیپل This has led to resentment and unrest among the Baloch. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is another province that has been targeted by the Pakistani government. It is a home to a strong Pashtun nationalist movement which the Pakistani government sees as a threat to its national security. The government employs military force to suppress the Pashtun nationalist movement resulting in widespread human rights abuses. Additionally, Proxies including extremist groups like Lashkar-e-Jangwi and Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan are used to foment instability in Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, perpetrating terrorist attacks on civilians, security forces and religious minorities. ये उनका जो ट्रेनिंग कैंप्स हैं इनके मकासे दिए हैं हम बलोचों को वो लोग जो है ना सेकुलर लोग देखते हैं और हमारे ऊपर हमारे घरों पर हमारे اسکولوں پر ہماری مدرسوں پر ہماری عورتوں پر ہماری بچوں پر یہ اس طرح کے وہ ظلم کرتے رہے ہیں کر رہے ہیں اور یہ پورا ایک آئی سائی کا پلانڈ پروجیکٹ دی انسٹیبلٹی ان دیز پروونسز ہیز لیڈ ٹو دی ڈسپلیسمنٹ آف ملینس لاس آف تھاؤزنڈس آف لائفس اینڈ ہنڈرڈ اکنامک ڈیولپمنٹ The Mastung and Hangu suicide attacks are the latest in a series of tragic incidents that have raised questions about the Pakistani state's commitment to combating terrorism and safeguarding its citizens. It is imperative for Pakistan to address the root causes of terrorism and provide a better future for its people. Pakistan backed terrorism has posed a persistent challenge to India's security for years. Terrorists who take shelter in Pakistan have continuously sought to disrupt peace within India's borders. India's law enforcement agencies, however, struck a major blow to Islamabad's devious intentions by apprehending an active terrorist and its associates, successfully thwarting a terror plot aimed at India. We have a report. The persistent efforts of India's investigative agencies received another breakthrough as a series of raids and collaborative operations led to the apprehension of Mohammad Shah Nawaz Alam, a known terrorist in Delhi. Shah Nawaz is a member of the ISIS terrorist organization and currently ranks at the top of the National Investigation Agency's most wanted list with a reward of 3 lakh rupees on his head. Additionally, the Delhi police special cell also arrested Mohammad Arshad Warsi and Mohammad Rizwan Ashraf, both active ISI terrorists who were collaborating with Shah Nawaz. Special Commissioner Har Gobinder Singh Dhaliwal, head of the Delhi police special cell, confirmed during a recent press conference that Shah Nawaz and his associates were planning a major terrorist attack in India. Initial investigations suggest that the terrorists had conducted reconnaissance missions in southern and western India and had attempted to establish an operational base in the western Ghats. Special Cell ne last month ek uh, NIA ne reward declare kiye the teen logon pe jin pe alag alag blast cases mein unki involvement hone ka aarop tha aur unka ek مین اکیوز تھا محمد شاہ نواز اس کو آج صبح اس کے دو ساتھیوں کے ساتھ جس میں محمد رضوان اشرف ہے اور تیسرا محمد ارشد وارسی ہے ان کو اریسٹ کیا آج صبح کورٹ میں ان کو ارلی مارننگ آرز میں جج صاحب کے آگے پیش کر کے سات دن کا پولیس کسٹڈی ریمانڈ لیا گیا ہے اور جب ان کے ٹکانوں پہ ریڈ ہوا تو تمام ایکسپلوسوز بنانے کی ڈفرنٹ جو اکوپمنٹس تھی جو کہ انہوں نے الگ الگ جگہ سے حاصل کری تھی جس میں 
एलिमेंट्री प्लास्टिक ट्यूब्स आयरन पाइप्स अलग अलग तरह के केमिकल्स बहुत सारी और जो टाइमिंग डिवाइसेस एट्सेट्रा जो कि एक्सप्लोसिव बनाने में यूज़ हो सकती थी वो मोहम्मद शाहनवाज के टिकाने से आ, हमारी टीम ने रिकवर करी है इसके अलावा पिस्टल और उसमें कार्ट्रेजेस और उसके साथ और भी जो बॉम्ब बनाने के अलग अलग लिटरेचर थे जो कि इन्हें ख़ास तौर पे इनके जो क्रॉस दी बॉर्डर पाकिस्तान के हैंडलर्स थे उन्होंने भेजे ऑन गोइंग इंटरोगेशन ऑफ शाह नवाज एंड हिज एसोशिएट्स हैव रिवील्ड अ चेंज इन पाकिस्तान स्ट्रैटेजी फॉर स्प्रेडिंग टेरिज्म इन इंडिया Interrogation of the arrested ISIS terrorists reveals that they were being carefully trained and ordered by their handlers sitting in Pakistan to procure all the needed support and equipment from local sources building everything from scratch in India itself This was being done so that no link could be established between the terrorists on the ground back to their handlers operating from the safe havens in Pakistan However, the recent bust of overground worker network in India and a massive crackdown on individuals involved in terror financing have resulted in the destruction of the terrorism support system in India. If I try to get things from outside, people will spot it that there is this particular circle of persons who are receiving a lot of material from outside. who are going outside so best to if you want to basically mingle in the surroundings then you have to operate in the surroundings so whatever you acquire locally is not going to raise eyebrows unless you start to acquire controversial things very very fast so you have to do everything inobtrusively you must not raise attention and therefore one way is to act locally and do it very very slowly so that if anybody gets caught the cell numbers members will only know one another they will not know the person who basically they are reporting to pakistan a country plagued by internal problems has never ceased its efforts to propagate terrorism despite a struggling economy numerous human rights abuses by its military and political instability pakistan has not refrained from meddling in india's internal affairs and undermining peace however the collaborative efforts of indian investigative agencies and a strong military presence at the border have consistently endured that india remains a peaceful and secure nation which is continuously touching new heights of development and prosperity Moving on a continuous fall in economy an army which meddles in civil and affairs or can take over the elected government at any time this all topped by the political leaders who remain busy managing their own mess pakistan's people now face a dilemma of life and death left with either fleeing from their homelands for a better future picking up arms to express their aggression or giving up against the country's problems and suffering Let's delve into this. Walking for miles while from one side of the border to another now remains the last option for many people living in Pakistan who see no hope of a bright future in Pakistan. These individuals now have no option but to leave their homeland and migrate illegally to Europe after paying loads of money to illegal human traffickers. All while knowing that the promises made by agents or the human traffickers of ensuring a safe travel across borders is nothing more than a bluff even today hundreds of individuals that flee pakistan never reach their desired destinations alive the worst phase of the country's illegal migration network was revealed when a fishing boat carrying more than 700 illegal migrants in greece sank the sea the fishing trawler carried more than 300 pakistanis who had left their homelands but never reached their destinations 
as the spread of terrorism and an unstable government which is frequently overthrown by military coups give them no hope for the future this is the seventh prime minister in the history of pakistan which has been charged and jailed uh, the pakistani people look at it the greek boat tragedy happened in june 750 people on a boat capsized uh 300 of them pakistanis 135 of them from pakistan administered jammu and kashmir imagine you know this is this is part of a human trafficking business now imagine 300 people of pakistan paid this kind of money and this is one instance we know of because the boat capsized running away from their own country because they have absolutely no avenues the look at the look at the 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 currency rate of of the pakistani rupee it's 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 in a spiral downfall so you know one can say that these um this situation in the country is because of terrorism on the other hand and both stories are true um because of this situation there is also terrorism Pakistan bread terrorism is not only a global challenge but is also making the life of its people miserable. A recent report by the International Labour Organization states that as of December 2019 more than 11 million Pakistanis have proceeded abroad for employment to over 50 countries through official procedures. Any such report however leaves aside the number of people trying to flee from Pakistan via illegal means. Terrorism, a problem which was created by Pakistan as a state policy, remains supported and is harbored over time by security agencies for a long time. This narrative of the Pakistanis that they are victims of terrorism, I to a certain extent do buy that common normal people of Pakistan a victim of terrorism but the only people they have to blame is their rulers for it because this is something which has been cultivated it is the chickens coming home to roost Pakistan has never refrained from its old habits of supporting and harboring terrorism terrorists like Masood Azhar Hafiz Said Sajid Meer Abdul Rahman Maki who are at the top of FBI's most wanted list still enjoy the protection of the Pakistani army and the inter services intelligence even when numerous proofs of them being involved in numerous blasts have been supplied Pakistan even in the past has a track record of creating problems of terrorism for itself and its people ultimately using brutal force when the general public tries to resist All while their political leadership is busy making sure they remain safe or in power and are able to use the public for their own interests. This is Pakistan's Frankenstein's monster. They created them, they sponsored them, they harbored them, they trained them. At some point of time this monster will turn its back on you. Pakistan will not eradicate terrorism. what pakistan will do if the ttp is fighting the pakistani state they will support another terrorist group to fight the ttp and if that group becomes rogue it like it happened in kashmir jklf was supported by the pakistanis ostensibly jklf had this kind of independent secular you know kind of wanted to have that outfit while the jklf of the 90s absolute or the late 80s was absolutely not a secular group or a pro nationalist group so what happened in order to counter the jkla the hizbul mujahideen was created in order to counter the hizbul mujahideen the lashkar was created then the jaish e mohammed was created the same is going to happen here inevitably the people of pakistan now suffer at the hands of their regime and their army they see no hope of a life of prosperity and safety The security forces in Jammu and Kashmir are operating at a heightened state of readiness diligently working to dismantle the terrorist network within the region
In a recent operation, the Jammu and Kashmir police, in cooperation with security forces, successfully eliminated two terrorists in Kulgam, South Kashmir. Police records affirm the involvement of both deceased terrorists in various terrorism-related offences. Simultaneously, security forces launched another operation in Kalakot, Rajori, prompted by reports of suspicious activities in the area. This joint operation involved the Indian Army, Jammu and Kashmir Police and CRPF personnel with the primary objective of eliminating terrorists concealed within the dense forests. We have a report. The vigilance of Indian security forces has intensified due to evolving tactics employed by Pakistan-based terrorists seeking to infiltrate Jammu and Kashmir and disrupt the peace in the region. On October 4th, Jammu and Kashmir police, in collaboration with security forces, successfully neutralized two terrorists in Kulgam, South Kashmir. Acting on specific intelligence regarding terrorist presence in the Kujjar area of Kulgam, a joint cordon and search operation was swiftly launched by Kulgam police, the Indian Army and CRPF in the targeted area. As the joint search party approached the suspected location, the concealed terrorists opened fire indiscriminately, prompting an effective retaliation and ensuing in an encounter. This encounter resulted in the elimination of two terrorists associated with the banned Hezbollah Mujahideen outfit and their bodies were subsequently recovered from the encounter site. Police records confirm the involvement of both slain terrorists in multiple terror-related crimes. Concurrently, another operation was initiated by security forces in Rajori's Kalakoti, prompted by information about suspicious movements in the region. This operation, jointly conducted by the Indian Army, Jammu and Kashmir Police and CRPF personnel, aimed to root out terrorists hiding in the dense forests. लगातार सुबह से फायरिंग चल रही है वैसे तो नफरी तो परसों से रात से ही लगी है आज समझो 48 72 घंटे होने जा रहे हैं तो रात को जबरदस्त फायरिंग हुई है वो सुनना है हमने जो आवाजें सुनी है वो तो मोटे मोटार जैसे ग्रेनेड या राकेट लैंचर वगैरह फटता है इस तरह से बड़ी आवाजें भी आई और रात भर फायर चलता रहा लोगों में काफी दहशत का माहौल है क्योंकि पूरा गांव रात को सहमा रहा द एरिया वेयर दिस ऑपरेशन टुक प्लेस is situated on the border of Rajori district with Riyasi district and had previously served as a significant route for terrorists crossing the line of control from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir into the Kashmir Valley and the Chinab Valley region. It is evident that Pakistan has shifted its tactics, dispatching highly trained and well-equipped terrorists to execute guerrilla-style attacks on security convoys, camps, and patrols rather than deploying them in the Kashmir Valley to target civilians and minorities. Jammu and Kashmir police suspect that Rajori, Punch and Riyasi districts are primary targets for Pakistan and its affiliated terror groups aligning with Islamabad's agenda to reignite terrorism in the region. In the past nine months, the border districts of Rajori and Punch have witnessed the loss of 18 lives, including 11 soldiers, while security forces have successfully eliminated more than half a dozen terrorists in the last three months. These twin border districts, located south of Pir Panjal, have been subjected to three major terror attacks on January 1 at Dhangri, April 20 at Totagali in Punch, and May 5 in the Kandi forests of Rajori. Earlier, Pakistan used to target the belt which is adjacent to the Kashmir Valley because they had more supporters in Kashmir Valley and with the kind of the religious affiliation they had, uh, they terrorists were more comfortable and used to feel that they are safer. Over a period, the counter-terrorist uh, grid and the counter-infiltration grid uh, in the Kashmir Valley has become very tight. So it has become very difficult for them uh, to infiltrate from Kashmir Valley. So that's why 
the troop density was relatively lower in the Jammu and Rajouri sector. So, that is why they thought that we may have little more chances in getting through the infiltration if we used the other sector that is the Jammu Rajouri sector. Pakistan's persistent efforts to disrupt peace in India, orchestrated covertly, continue to be a regrettable recurrence. Despite grappling with internal challenges, including economic difficulties, Pakistan persists in fueling terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. In contrast, India maintains a well-structured framework to counteract such threats and safeguard the region's tranquility. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.nin.com. This is Shivangi Vishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.